So, uh, great. So, hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Santiago, and I'm the Information Literacy Librarian here at Penn. I'm new to Penn as well. I started in June, so I've only been here for a few months. Um, and as Information Literacy Librarian, I work with faculty, program administrators, and other librarians to bring information literacy into courses and academic programs. Um, I also really enjoy working with students and helping you get your bearings straight at the library. We have so many great resources and it can be a bit overwhelming, I find. Um, so I'm here to help you connect with the right resources and the right people. Remember that people are resources as well. Uh, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one video chats and I can help you make a game plan for research. So I'm going to post my uh, contact information at the end of today's workshop and uh, encourage you to get in contact with me. Okay, so when a student comes to me and says, I'm looking for information about a topic or I'm researching or writing a paper and I'm looking for sources, one of the first things I do is I see if the library has a research guide on that topic. Research guides are a great place to start when you're doing research because they pull together information about a particular subject or course of study. So today I'm going to introduce you to our selection of research guides and show you how to find one on your topic. Um, so I keep saying research guides, uh, but what exactly is a research guide? For our purposes today and at the library, Research guides are online web pages created by librarians to help users perform various information retrieval tasks. So they're like little mini web pages um, where, where librarians pull together resources for you. Um, something useful to know about um, Penn libraries is that for every field of study here at Penn, there's an assigned subject librarian who is not only an expert on the library and on doing research, but is also an expert in that particular field of study. For instance, we have a mathematics librarian, engineering librarians, we have psychology librarians, nursing librarians, librarians for all of the different biomedical uh, fields. Um, there are librarians for different geographic locations and for uh, different languages. Uh, there's a whole slew of business librarians um, and each one of them is an expert in some facet of business like accounting or uh, real estate. Uh, there are music librarians, art and architecture librarians. I could go on. Uh, basically, if you name it, we probably have a librarian for that. I see that there's a question in the chat. Oh, um, there are not supposed to be slides that accompany this session, but once we start to look at the, um, the library guides, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at the website together. I just wanted to give a little um, intro. You're welcome. Okay, so um, let me get back to my notes. Uh, yeah, so in addition to subject librarians, we also have technology and software specialists. So there are uh, librarians that are uh, uh, experts in digital humanities, GIS and mapping, data, video production, and photo editing. Um, so you have an option of scheduling an appointment with any of these specialists. But the cool thing about research guides are that they're created by these specialists and they're available on the library website 24 seven. So sometimes when you do schedule an appointment with one of these specialists, a lot of the first questions for you is going to be, uh, did you look at the research guide on that topic? So today we're going to learn how to find them and how to use them. Okay, so with that, um, I am going to um, start to share my screen and I'm going to show you um, the library website. So just give me one moment. And also, yeah, if you have questions during this, you can put them in the chat and I will um, get to the questions at the end. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So this is the library website. Um, to get to the research guides that I'm talking about, you'll hover over help with and then under research here, you see guides by topic. I'm gonna to click on that. Now, once I'm here at this part of the library website, I see all of these different um, subjects. Now, these aren't the guides themselves. When we click on one of them, 
it will expand and show you uh, a, a number of different guides. So I was talking about how business has a lot of different guides. So look at all of these different um, subjects of business that have research guides. Um, I'm going to click on one eventually, but I just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what this page looks like and how many we have. Um, when you click on biomedical research, there's also a few different types of um, guides here. Um, now, I want to navigate to one of my favorite guides so we can see what one of these actually looks like. So I'm going to go to communication. And under communication, there's a guide called media activism that I think is really great. I guess I'll just start talking about this before the, the page loads. Um, so you'll find a lot of different things uh, in a, a, a library guide and a research guide. Uh, I'm really sorry that this is taking so long. Let me click on one of these and see if that, okay. Let's go back to the overview. I do really like the overview. Is that, not, is that page not going to load? Okay, let's start with general databases. So um, one of the things that you'll see on, on, on these guides, uh, you'll find different databases. Um, you can search, so from the library website, like uh, here, if you wanted to find information on something, you could just type it into this box, right? And it'll search everything that we have. But the thing is, that's a lot of stuff, right? Uh, what happens in these research guides is, a subject librarian will collect just specific databases that they think um, is relevant to whatever the topic of the guide is. So you can, instead of choosing or searching everything, you can search just uh, like a, a database that covers communication sources or just a database um, that is about uh, literature, language, folklore, and linguistics. So they'll, they'll choose just certain ones. Over here on the right for this media guide, um, there's a lot of different databases that are just news uh, sources. So the one thing, one thing that the, the research guides will do is they will pinpoint uh, databases that are good for you for the, the, the topic. Something else that you'll find in, in these research guides, you'll find selections of books, right? Um, these could be books on your topic that could be potential sources, but oftentimes they're also, you see over here on the right, they're reference books or handbooks, encyclopedias that can be used to do background research on your topic. There are also thousands of uh, journals that we have access to, and um, some of these uh, guides will point out specific journals that you have access to through the library website for you to look at that are related directly to whatever the guide is on. Uh, they'll also uh, link out to websites that are outside of the library that the subject specialist thinks might help you in your research as well. Um, sometimes they also link to other guides uh, that are good. So um, yeah, so this is just one guide. I wanted to show you a few other guides so you kind of get an idea of what kinds of things you'll see in here. Some of the guides have videos. Um, I want to show you this uh, cinema and media studies guide is really great because it covers um, all of the different streaming uh, sources um, that are related to the website. So um, this one is cool also because it has this list of best films of all time and then each film under it is a link to stream it or to borrow the DVD from the library website. I don't know how many people still have DVD players, but I do. Uh, yeah, so, so the thing is, um, there are as many guides as there are unique individuals at the library and unique uh, like subjects of, of study. Um, I wanted to actually ask you all, can you give me um, like, a kind of guide that 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 you think that might be helpful to you. You can just put it into the chat. Um, okay, finance. I see a few people different. Okay, finance. I'm getting a lot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the guides, right? And there are two different ways that we can do this. We can go to business, right? and see if there's a finance guide. Here we go, right here. So this was this is very straightforward. I click on this um, and there are different tabs in this guide. So this is one of those guides that has related research guides, points to other ones. Um, 
this is a uh, different, these are like different background um, uh, sources. And then these different tabs, like this tab has data on different companies. Um, each tab has like sort of different groups of, of links and, um, and resources that are related to, to finance. Um, right here, we have physical books that we have at the library. So if anybody is on campus this or in Philadelphia during the fall, you can borrow books for pickup. Um, so this has a bunch of different books that you can borrow. Yeah, um, when we go to this last tab, it has some periodicals and some directories. Uh, and something that I wanted to point out is I was talking about how there are librarians that are related to each subject. Another good thing about the guides is that in each guide, there should be this box that shows you who the librarian is for whatever the guide, uh, the, the guide topic is. So you're interested in finance, you want to know more, you've looked at all of these tabs, you've kind of poked around and you're still like, I'm not really getting exactly what I'm looking for. You can contact Marcella, you can email her um, and she could make herself available to meet you via um, chat or via video chat. You can email her questions. Uh, so there are a lot of different ways to get in touch with the librarians once you find them in the guides. So there are a few different things I want to show you before I start to answer questions. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to the guides. Another place that you're going to see library guides is um, in Canvas. So this semester, nearly every course is going to have a Canvas site. It's like the online home of your course where all of the discussions and the reading assignments live. Many Canvas sites are going to have a research guide embedded within the Canvas site. So um, this is what that's going to look like. Um, a lot of you are going to be taking um, the critical writing program classes this semester. The critical writing program is one of the um, programs that I work with very closely. Um, so I've created this library guide that is going to be embedded in every single critical writing program Canvas. So you can get to library guides through the library website. But then also through Canvas, a lot of you are going to have direct access to a library guide, right? Now, I just mentioned that that means that there are library guides that are related to courses. Um, here on the, uh, the guides website, if you click on course guides, say you know you're taking, you know what courses you're taking in the fall. You can come to this website and see if there is a course or a, a research guide that is related directly to whatever course you're taking. So say I'm taking Psych 001, this is a library guide that was created with the curriculum of that site class in mind. Um, one last thing that I wanted to show you before I start answering questions, I talked about how there are subject guides or subject librarians and also technical um, specialists over here. To the right, uh, you'll see service guides. So when you click on service guides, these are guides that instead of being related to topics like subjects in school or um, disciplines, these are guides that have to do with other services that you can get at the library. So there's a guide about 3D printing, if you're interested in 3D printing. Unfortunately, um, with us going remote, I think that the availability of this is, is not going to be the same as usual. But if you wanna know what we have as far as that goes, you can look at this. Um, there's also uh, guides about like how to borrow books remotely. There's a lot of different kinds of guides. So again, from the Penn Library's website, you're going to hover over help with, go to research and guides by topic. And you can also search guides by keywords. So recently I was looking for guides about career resources. Um, and when you search guides, they'll give you um, all of the different pages of guides that have information about career stuff. So those are a few different ways to find library guides related to whatever it is that you're interested in. If you're interested in something personally, if you're interested in something um, that has to do with a paper at school, or just if you're interested in a different um, major, like you haven't um, declared a major and you want to know more about that, um, those, are, those are different ways into uh, the research guides. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to copy and paste my, uh, my contact information in the chat. And so if anybody wants to get in contact with me, that's the way to get in contact with me. Okay. Now I am going to scroll up. I see that there are a lot of questions. So uh, bear with me while I, I work through these. Okay. Um, let's see. How do you schedule an appointment with a specialist? That's a really great question. So um, I'm going to share my screen again really quickly. I think that this is going to be something that, that is going to be helpful to everyone. So let's, let's check this out. So when we went to guides, right, and we saw all these different guides here, over here we see featured subject specialists. I'm like, okay, who else? Who else is here? So you can click on more subject specialists and it will give you the contact information for all of these different people, right? So you can email people, but also let's go back to the library website. I'm going to show you um, a part of the library website that's going to be sort of like endlessly helpful as we um, go into the semester where we're remote, right? So at the top of the page, um, we see borrow books and materials, read our FAQ, um, and then up top it says COVID-19 update. Find the latest updates on phased service availability and connect with us for virtual support. I'm going to click on virtual support. This is like the control base of, of whatever virtual support we have to offer you as students, right? And the first box here says talk with a librarian, right? So you can chat with with uh with a librarian who's on chat at any point from nine to five but if you want to talk to that specialist you want to find your personal librarian that's going to take you to the page that i showed you before as well um so you can make appointments this way there's yeah so so that's how you find the person to make an appointment with um so you can make an appointment with them in that way but at the top of the page it also says make an appointment you can find them this way so there are a few different ways into to getting time with a with with a with a subject specialist. That's a great question. Um, let's see. Uh, the recording is going to be posted on the um, the the library website, among other places. Um, does Penn have subscriptions for science research journals like Nature and Science? Yes. Um, what about media websites like Scientific American and Wall Street Journal? Totally. The answers are yes. Um, I, for those, I feel like the ones that you mentioned, I know off the top of my head that we do have um, subscriptions for. Um, and what you can do is you can get on the library website and search for the name of a journal. And then the library will show you the website will show you all the different ways to access that journal. And um, I'm going to go through the other questions. And then maybe I'll go back and actually do that. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, this is a great question um, that has to do directly with um, with research guides. When citing these resources for papers and projects, do we have to cite the guide or just the specific resource within the guide? This is a great question. You just cite the specific resource within the guide. The guide is sort of like a gateway or um, a container that holds a lot of different sources. But um, once they're there and you've connected with the source, you're going to treat the source um, as you would any physical book or any, um, any, any journal article or anything like that. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, let's see, people are asking and answering questions um, amongst yourselves, which I love. Um, let's see, how can I request books to pick up at the library? Um, I will show that as well. So let me just jot down pick up at pen and journals and I'll write, um, I'm going to write down one of the names of the journals that you were, let's see, um, uh, nature and science. I was just looking at science, so we'll do that one. Okay, let me just look at a few more questions. Yeah, okay. So, so the tabs on the top of the guides differ from guide to guide. Um, so somebody asked how the tabs that at the top of the guides differ from guide to guide. So because the, the research guides are kind of just a platform for different people to create resources um, upon their own accord, different librarians, um, 
there is not exactly a solid um, like consistency to how those tabs are used. It really depends on the tab, or I'm sorry, it depends on the guide, it depends on the librarian. So every, every, every guide is going to be a little bit different as far as how it uses tabs. Some don't have tabs at all. Some, some will have um, uh, uh, navigation on the left side. Um, so it really depends on, on the guide is the, the answer to that question. Okay. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure about EndNote access, um, but I can look into that. Um, yes, the library does have subscriptions to magazines like The Economist or Bloomberg. I'm going to show you something called um, Press Reader that I think you're really going to like. So, um, but uh, are tabs usually, sometimes tabs are topics within the guide. Um, sometimes, um, like I made a guide for the critical writing program where the tabs are different assignments that you'll, you'll find while you're in the critical writing program. So it really depends. It could be topics. It could be um, types of resources. Like some guides will have a tab for uh, books and then another tab for databases. So it really depends from, 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 from guide to guide. What's my favorite library resource? Um, I actually really like Press Reader. So I think that um, while we're talking about this, um, I'm going to share my screen really quickly and I'm going to show you Press Reader because I think it's really neat. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. We're going to go to the library website. And now we talked about um, how to find journals like Science and, and Nature. So let's do Science really quick before we do um, Press Reader. So I'm just going to type the word Science in, right? And so obviously I'm going to get a lot of results, right? But I know that I'm looking for um, the online uh, journal or the, the magazine science, and I know that I want to uh, access it online. So here we have all of these different, we have articles plus. So we have a lot of different names of articles that have the word science in them or inside the body of the articles. Over here we have databases, but here on the left where it says catalog, I see science here, right here. And, and I think that it might be what I'm looking for. I see that it's a journal or a periodical. So I'm gonna click on science. And when I scroll down, it shows me all of these different databases that give me access to science, right? Um, and this one says, use this for access to current science issues. So when I click on this, it's going to take me to um, the science website, I'm quite sure, but will be behind the paywall which I think is really cool. Um, so uh, a short, direct way to find specific uh, magazines or journals, you can just put the name of them in here um, and then um, uh, look at the catalog entry for them. But I'm going to look at Press Reader because people are asking about magazines a lot, right? So Press Reader is this really great database. Um, I'm going to click on Press Reader and down here it says connect to resource. Now, what I like about Press Reader is that it, it gives you access to these magazines and to these newspapers, but it shows you what they would look like if you had them physically, which I think is really cool. Like we have certain databases that take the articles out and so you can read just the text. But the cool thing about Press Reader is you can see exactly what these, these magazines and these newspapers look like, right? So you can search for the publication that you're looking for here. Um, another great thing about Press Reader is that it has this um, international view where you can find different magazines and newspapers from different, uh, different geographic locations, different countries. Um, and I just think that these are great. Uh, so, so yeah, so I would definitely write down Press Reader is, is going to answer a lot of, it seems like everybody is interested in, in magazines and, and journals. So Press Reader is just one way in. Okay. Um, oh, someone else asked about Pick Up at Pen. I just want you guys to see what it looks like. <laughs> okay. So here at Options, I'll get a few different options here under, okay, so here we go. 
pick up a pen is is how you um, borrow books to pick up um, at the library. Um, if you want to have just a part of a book scanned and sent to you, you can do that as well by requesting digital delivery. Um, we also do books by mail. Um, so uh, I would say if you want to know more about any of these uh, specific services, you're going to want to go to that virtual support page, right? And that virtual support page is going to um, give you access to all of the different ways to interact with the library remotely. And I'm going to put that link also in the chat as well. Okay. Um, Let's see what else. We have a few more minutes. Does Penn have physical copies of the current issues of popular newspapers and magazines? Yes. Um, I don't know what the circulation uh, procedures are for things that are not books, um, but I think, again, this would be something that you would look at the virtual support page to find out. Because when you, when you place something on hold for pickup, it's checked out to you and, and, and put in a bag for you to pick up. So I'm not sure what they're doing with journals as far as that goes, but we do collect them. Um, let's see. Would anyone please be able to link the site where we can see the list of subscriptions? Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put my contact information in one more time. Um, and if you want to just shoot me a question um, directly, I can, um, I can spend a little bit more time on those. Um, I'm sorry if I wasn't able to uh, answer your question um, on the fly, but uh, thank you for all, everybody, thank you for coming. Um, I hope that that was helpful. I know it was a really short session, but the thing that I really want you to take home is that you can get in contact with us. Um, you can get in contact with someone who is an expert in your field. You can find um, a guide that is on your topic. Um, and yeah, we're, we're here for you. And, and I'm really excited to, to meet as many of you as possible this fall. Okay, thanks so much for coming. <laughs>